Good morning and thank you for joining us this morning on Off the Press on PLOS TV Africa. I am Benny Ock. We'll, we'll go through the dailies this morning and check out the major headlines from our national dailies. Joining me to do this this morning for in-depth analysis and review of the dailies is Femi Adegoke. Thank you for joining us, Femi, on Off the Press. Good morning. And we'll start off quickly with the Punch newspaper, the headline making um, the highlights in the Punch this morning. Togo, Niger, banning all Nigeria $30 billion for electricity. And that's on page 12 of the Punch newspaper. Oil price tumbles to $29 over global lockdown. Jam releases results of 312,000 UTME candidates. Federal government suspends issuance of $3.3 billion euro bond. And Oshomale Buhari shifts neck meeting as APC governors engage in shout match. APEX court leaves embattled chairman suspension. And court gives Giadom go ahead to become acting chair. Still in the Punch newspaper this morning, Lagos explosion debt toll hits 20. Families search for missing relatives. And Zeni Bank pays 88 billion naira dividends to shareholders. Oni visits Ekiti resolves fire me monarch's rift. And Habilis gives reasons for marrying 58 wives. And lastly in the Punch this morning, Ministry officials in fresh plot to return ex Firo DG. And this is more of the headlines in the Punch newspaper this morning. I think let's just put a little bit about um, the NEC meeting. Um, Oshomele, it's over Oshomele, I believe, other issues are um, bedeviling the party. Now, did you see this happening, the, the postponement, the shift in the NEC meeting? One would have thought it was priority for the APC and National Executive Committee to see the need for this meeting. Now we have a news that the meeting has been shifted. Your thoughts on this? Yeah, a uh, quick one. Um, APC seems to have an internal issue. They have uh, different caucuses, and they are really finding it difficult to come to a, an agreement. Either Oshomole should go, or Oshomole should say. Yeah. We have some governors who are on his side, and we have some governors who want him out. So yesterday, I think the, um, the governors of the APC states met with the Mr. President, which I believe necessitated the shift in the their neck meeting. Yes. So I am I'm sure that Mr. President would have given the governors some assignment to go and have a meeting before they have the neck. Yeah, of interesting note is um on an APC stalwart um Bola Ahmed Tinubu coming out to actually make a comment on the issue about around Oshomele. Yeah. And from his comment we can simply see what side he's tilting. Yeah. He's on the side of Oshomele. Yeah. Do, do you see this affecting uh, this this um, brahaha ongoing in the APC in any way in the favor of Shomale because Asua just seems to be a very prominent figure when, when it comes to matters in the APC. Yeah, well, politics is a game of number and who has a followership. Yes. Asua Dibola Tinumbu has uh, the followership and he has uh, the way to do yes. to muscle Oshomole back into power. But having said that, they, they, in some quarters it is believed that Oshomole's um, crisis emanated from even prior 2019 election and during the primaries because uh, it is said that it was made for their representatives were based on ISB. It is it's said in some quarters that Oshomole money exchange hand for him to put some candidates out. And then it's been made worse, which is a disagreement with, with the Edo state, God, God, Obaseki, Edo state, Edo state, Edo state yes. governor. And Obaseki seems to have some kind of, uh, he enjoys some kind of uh, where wishes among the governors. Mm. So he has that uh, love among his contemporaries. And the governors in the parties, they're the ones who control the states. They're the ones who control the local um, members of the party. So they have a lot of uh, strength. Yes. So he, he's, we, we, we wait to see how it pans out. Either the governors win or the party leaders. All right. Yeah. Now, let, let's put on this a little bit. Um, the Lagos explosion, we, yeah. we read in the dailies this morning that the death toll hits 20. Family search for missing relatives. When, when this happened, what was your thought? I said yesterday, the, um, the, the chairperson of um, Lasema said he still cannot ascertain the primary cause of the explosion and all they have is a secondary cause. And that made me ask, what, what is a secondary cause and what, what is a primary cause? Why is it at this point in time they still cannot ascertain what could have caused, brought about the explosion? Well, I'm going to speak in two folds okay. on that. Um, there are different accounts that have come out, different statements coming out that it's not the gas. There was a gas station yes. nearby, but the gas station, nothing happened because um, the liquefied gas uh, association yeah. 
went yesterday and they've come back that it has nothing to do with the gas station. And then there was a school of thought who said there was a bomb explosion? Yeah, okay. The, 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 those ones are saying now that the, the, it wasn't the gas uh, station yes. that caused the explosion. And then in some quarters, it's believed that a truck carrying some petroleum products actually collided with the uh, gas pipeline. And that's what re resulted in the massive explosion. The explosion yes. was massive because I was in Sulere. And I felt it. We heard the sound, and the roof shook where I was at the time. I was in church. And some people were even going to panic, and we had to manage it. So the thing is, right now, the government of Lagos State and federal government, because the pipeline, they need to set up a, a judicial and a technical committee, committee to look into it. It might not be what we're thinking. It might not just be uh, a, an ordinary explosion, which is why I'm going to speak on the other side. Yeah. A week ago, in that same area, we heard that masked men came out with marches and guns, and they were raiding people in that same area around Satellite Town, uh, Ado, Abule Ado. Abule Ado area. And then they said the police couldn't confront them. So for me, the security issue is still there, hanging. And it looks like Lagos is becoming porous. If this happens to be a bomb, as some people are saying, that the sound and the effect seems like a military uh, bomb detonation, then we're, we're not uh, let's take we're a look at the, as we think. Let's take a look at the nation newspaper quickly this morning. Only reconciles fire me aggrieved monarchs and also three jam candidates abducted. 312,157 resorts out. CBN releases 50 billion naira credit for businesses and oil price drops below $30 per barrel. Kidnappers funding terror group, says defense chief. And also Shomale survives and toddler rescued from Lagos explosion site 12 hours later. Now, interestingly, the, the appeal court seems to have, um, you know, lifted a suspension on Adams and Shomale. Yeah. But we have the court also giving Giadom the go-ahead to become acting chair. Yeah. It, it seems like a conflict in, in interest and ruling here. How, how do you react to this? Well, that is, I've always said it, um, that is um, the problem of our entire system, where both the executive, the judiciary, and the legislature. They are built around individuals. Like now, a court has suspended him on making another person um, the acting, acting chairman. And there's another court. I think they are about the same level of court. He's now saying they've lifted the suspension. Yes. So, it, so we, we're having two conflicting judgments. Yes. So he tells us that our judicial system needs to be properly worked on. All right. The oil price dropping below $30 per barrel cost concern. for concern and yeah. also knowing that big, we're, big. We're, big, uh, we're one of the biggest markets in, in um, crude yeah. production. Now, many people have argued the fact that with the drop in the oil price, that our pump price here at home still hasn't reflected that. Why is the government, why are petrol stations still selling at 145 per litre? I mean, what was the economics in this? Because we're, we're trying to understand the economics. <laughs> you know, okay. if globally the oil price is dropping. Now, yeah. many people back it also because already um, the, the federal government um, benchmarked the budget at, at a particular price mm. of the crude. But unfortunately, they can't, they can't go back on that because we're still selling our oil at um, PMS at 145. Yeah, we're still in PM, but don't forget that. I don't know how this, we, how this um, crisis will go along okay. for. Because, you know, we don't refine enough crude for petroleum products that we need at home. We still import yes. And that's why we still have the subsidy. So that's the major challenge. If what you're saying, if we were actually refining yes. what we consume locally, that would have been possible. But because we're still shipping crude out to import petroleum products, we might not be able to reduce the pump price. That's it. That's it. that's just that's just, that's just it. Okay, there's been there's been a going on field. I mean, it's also in the nation reported in the nation this morning. Only reconciles fire me. I grieve monarchs. There seem to be a back and forth between some monarchs and um, fire me. And I'm just wondering, our traditional institution. Do, do you think that they're occupying the space and and premise that they're meant to be occupying as traditional rulers and the, the impact they're meant to be making in society as it is right now? Honestly, if you want my view on that, I think our, our constitution does not give them a definite role. And I think 
in going going forward yes. to make them relevant and because they're the closest to the people i think they should be part of the local local government the local authority i think they need to be they need to have a specific role okay in that aspect because right now most of them not all of them most of them dance towards politicians and that's why they get um either insulted or being treated anyhow yes. because they have some of them have desecrated this tool uh, we've read about the about of Iwo, his own, own saga mm -hmm. and the present one we have to commend the Oni of Ife yes. and the um, Ikukubai Babaye of Oyo I love him for you for their stepping into the uh, Ilawe Ikiti's saga between the Obas of Ikiti and um, uh, the governor yeah. before it becomes another dethronement so we have to give uh, kudos for the Oni of Ife for stepping in all right. I have an interesting piece right there. The, um, the defense chief saying kidnappers are forming terror groups. A whole lot of a whole lot of comments and statements being thrown uh, flagrantly. And one just wonders if we're ever getting close to the solution of the, the major insecurity bedeviling the, the nation. I mean, kidnappers forming terror groups. And one would want to ask a question: How and how did this intel come about? Um, personally, I've said it. Our, our, our security chiefs they are incompetent. Over the past five years, they have shown that they don't have the capacity and the capability to move this country away from the present insecurity state. You don't come out and just give such blanket statement. Right. Tell us what you're doing. Yeah, you have found the problem. It's not the problem that Nigeria wants. Nigerians want the solution, which is this kind of statement is what gave back to all these Amotek one every. Uh, areas in the country now are bringing out their own security outfits because the security chiefs just come out and tell us every, like every month now they come out with a statement now they say they're saying is the, uh, uh, kidnappers, the kidnappers that are following the terror activities, ter terrorist activities. That, I don't want to get them if you can get them get them if you cannot what are you putting in place to stop what you have found out that's what we need to hear. We don't want to know who is funding terrorists. We need to stop their activities. That's what we. That's why they are there. Right. And lastly, with us this morning is the Guardian newspaper. First headline in the Guardian this morning: APC confusion deepens over Shomale. The National Executive Committee says, and also CBN releases measures to battle economic impact of coronavirus. Federal government includes France, Germany, Spain on list of high risk countries, and FIME signs a Motekun bill into law. We didn't recommend a King Bola sacking banks take over, says the EFCC witness. And at Ofemu's birthday, Father Namimiko orders arch restructuring, says Nigeria is not taken seriously. And lastly, in The Guardian this morning, I lost two family members. Life has lost its meaning, and they should be a victim from the recent That's fire awesome. explosion at um, Abule Addo in Lagos State right here. Interestingly, I'm finding me signs there, Motekun Bill, and you were talking about it earlier when you're yeah. making issues on security. Yeah. Now, many people would say that it seems like the speed on the Motekun um, security outfit, that's, that it seems to be running slow. Uh, is it that most national uh, state houses of assembly are not doing the, the due diligence and speed as is expected of them to do? Well, I, <clears throat> with the information that we have, yes. I think all states have their bills sorted, and I think most of them have signed. I guess, I'm just guessing now, because there were some quarters who believed that the pros whole process was almost hijacked by politicians. And that's not, we don't want that. Yes. We want the Amotekun uh, Western Nigerian security outfit in each six states to come out and do the, uh, what it was set out to do and not political... Uh, uh, aggrandizement or yeah. political hijack by some political uh, politicians. So we maybe or maybe not. That's why we're seeing some slow arm moves now because okay. it is believed that some people want to hijack it. Now let, let's talk about let's talk, stay on security and then about borders and our airports because yeah. um, just yesterday in the news yeah. we we heard from the the president of Ghana. I mean, putting restriction bans on some countries and mm. their airports and. But nothing of that seems to be done in Nigeria. I mean, some of the, there are no restriction bans, and they're coming down the news to say the federal government includes France, Germany, Spain on list of high-risk countries. Mm. We've not heard anything about restriction of travels, yeah. inbound tourism. Nothing yeah. about it's been done. I mean, are we really taking the measures we should take in curtailing and 
coronavirus and protecting ourselves as citizens of this great country? Well, um, I will say very... No restriction bans yet. No, no restriction bans yes. yet. I think that should come from the presidency. Yes. The Ministry of Health, because on a daily basis, the Minister for uh, State for Health, that's Dr. Honorary Member Mamora. Mamora, yes. It comes out to give uh, latest information on the coronavirus. We cannot, I agree with you, we cannot treat it with a uh, kid's glove yeah. because it's some African countries are, are having multiple coronavirus cases. And then our land borders, I think they're still as porous as ever. And then we're, bu we're busy focusing on the airport and talking about France and what about people who work in yes. or who drives in? What are we doing? We're not doing enough at testing for this uh, virus. But I haven't said that. We have to commend the health workers for what they're doing thus far, trying to manage entry at the airport. But we need to do more. Mm -hmm. And the presidency has not, like you said, we saw the Ghanaian president oh, yes. address his people. Oh, yes. We saw the South African president address his people. Sir Ramaphosa, yes. Yeah. But we have not heard anything from our president. And uh, the question is, when last did our president address us on any issue? I know people are talking about this uh, explosion, but before the explosion was coronavirus. We have not even heard anything from him. Yes. At least five minutes, two minutes, a national broadcast wouldn't do him any harm. APC confusion deepens over Shomala says neck. Now, what, what, what do you think this might, might pretend for the APC in, in view of 2023? Many people have said, you know what, 2023 is still a long way to go. Um, one of my guests yesterday said it's a millennial away. But um, in the comments of uh, Ju Ahmed Tinubu yesterday, he did say that some of the people fermenting this trouble yeah. uh, all, yeah. all in view of 2023. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, obviously, and glaring to everybody, there is problem. The house is divided against itself. Yeah. I mean, do you see them in 2023, 2023 still being the ruling party? If we as a people, yeah. like you said, we're still saying 2023 is far, mm. then they will be in power again because they will still keep their incompetence and their incapability in power. You know why? They're already thinking about 2023 and they're already strategizing yes. and they're already plotting. And that's why you see all these things that is going on. It's, I see what you was right to say it is... Uh, the 2023 virus yes. that is affecting people and I want Oshomale out. I don't know what is, that is, but really, the politicians in APC right now, they are strategically dirty, in a dirty form, trying to position themselves, trying to get rid of who they can get rid for 2023. Mm. But we as a people, like we have always done, will sit down, fold our hands, even the new generation politicians, the la we saw how many parties in the last election. Have you heard anything from them recently? Nothing. They've all gone to bed, to sleep. Even the uh, APDP, the most opposition party, they are not even saying anything. Yes. Now, when it gets to 2022, then everybody comes out, start rushing. So it's, it's 2023 they are preparing for. Right. But we are not prepared. That, as a people, uh, that's a problem. Uh, let's spoil a little bit on the economy this morning, if you will. Now, CBI releases measures in, to about two economic impact on coronavirus, and we're told that they release about 50 billion naira credit for businesses um, with, with lower interest rates. Uh, how, how do you say this? Commendable? I mean, and, well, yeah, it's commendable, but you cannot be. We cannot. You cannot be an island on your own. Mm -hmm. You cannot be an island to yourself. I still come back to, which will make me go back to, yeah, they release funds. Who's going to do business with you? Our border is still short since August last year. Now the global market, the Chinese, the Americans, yes. everybody's, uh, because of coronavirus, yeah. short. And then your local business, that are uh, sub-West uh, African countries, we're short our borders against them. So how we, do we have enough to even cater for ourselves? in the first instance, because you're releasing the money, do we have wherewithal to maximize this money? It's good to release money for businesses, but who are you doing businesses with? You don't just have money and keep it. You need to do business, but our border is still closed. Yeah, and, and interestingly, in the news this morning, that the $22.7 billion um, loan the president sought for has been, has been suspended, has been called off. What, what is your so. thoughts on that? <laughs> you know that I, even yesterday, yes. um, one of the House of Rep members 
was calling for uh, House of Rep to rather use the money voted for their cars for children out of schools. Mm. Reality is, is dawning on them now that, look, you can't live beyond your means. Yes. Now, the president is dropping the $22.7 billion loan. They have to, because how are you going to pay back with the current... I don't even think anybody wants to borrow your money now with the current situation of the uh, pandemic situation we have in our hand with coronavirus. You know, interesting to note that we have people owing Nigeria money because uh, in one of the daily they did mention that Togo, Niger, and Benin owe Nigeria about $30 billion for electricity. Yeah. I mean, we have countries owing us money. I yeah. mean, and, and this is for. They've all been owing us, and some people have been taking that money and putting it in their pocket. That's, 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 it's not now. They, they've always been owing. The reason why they are owing Nigeria, one of the things I know is that, you know, we, the, 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 the Kanji Dam, the Niger River. Yes came through from Mali all the way through those processes to go to Nigeria. Nigeria was the first to dam it. And then we have a, like a bilateral agreement to supply them electricity and they'll pay for it. So if we're supplying them electricity, they're meant to pay. But the question is, up until now, we had nothing about this. Uh, they're owing or they're not owing. Mm. But now push is coming to shove. So this, as they are coming out. We have to look inward. I was taught in my economic geography that the best economic for any nation is export-based economy, yes. not import-based economy. So we need to begin to look inward, which is why I said earlier, what Central Bank has done is good for us to begin to do things at home, process and all that. Agriculture, we need to develop all the sectors. But with our borders shut and with the coronavirus pandemic, what are we going to do? Femi Idowa Degoke, public analyst, thank you very much for joining us on Off the Press this morning. Exactly. And as much we can me. take this morning off the press, same time tomorrow, join us on Plus TV Africa. Good morning and do stay with us. I am Benny Ark. <laughs>